Hello friends, welcome back to our course Math Essential for Machine Learning and in today's topic we are going to talk about the magnitude or length of a vector and mathematicians call it as a norm which means the way to uh, measure the length of a vector. Okay. Uh, now this norm uh, of course we are going to discuss a lot about the different types of norm but today first let us see what are the few intuitive properties that this norm has. One is that the all distances are non-negative that it obviously makes sense if we travel from a location A to B uh, it has to be non-negative we cannot say we have traveled minus 1 mile or minus 1 kilometer right that does not make sense we are going to take the absolute value first of all. The second property is uh, distances increase or decrease with the scalar multiplication. So, if we say we travel from A to B which was say 5 kilometers or 5 miles uh, and you know if we have to travel 10 times of that then it becomes 50 kilometer or 50 miles right with our example. And the third uh, property is called triangle inequality which means that if I go from point A to B and then from B to C right or if I go directly from A to C then of course A to C will be the longest length but then it will take the shortest time right. So, let us see if, uh, diagrammatically how these three properties look like. Okay. So, the first property of our norm which is a technique to calculate the length of a vector or magnitude of a vector is that the distance is non-negative. So, what does it mean? So, suppose um, I have a vector right and a, if I draw an axis here okay, and say I have a vector something like this. So, that means it has traveled from a certain point 0 and say this is my point uh, say 3 3 just an example. Okay. So, that means it distance it has traveled some distance and if it did not move at all maybe it changed direction that is fine, but it still in, in this location stays in this location then the that is still 0, but not a negative because non negative does not make any sense uh, in terms of length. So, norms are given by two vertical lines. So, if my vector is v then the first property says that it has to be at least greater than equal to 0 that is the first property that uh, 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 it, it, it is written between mathematically it is written between two double vertical lines and it should be greater than equal to 0 that is the first property. So, distance should be non negative all right. So, the next property um, says that the distance increase or decrease uh, or scales depending on the scalar multiplication. So, for example, if I have say one vector like this okay, and say this looks something like this say which is 2 comma 2 right and I can represent my vector v equal to um, say 2 comma 2. Now, if I do a scalar multiplication of a is equal to say 3 that means it becomes something like this multiply by 3 right and it becomes 6 by 6 right so what would happen is um, this this vector here will be scaled three times so this will become something like this right uh, so 2 times uh, 2 comma 2 which is our vector v1 now, if I multiply with a scalar multiply with 3, then it becomes 3 times that length. So, it will become 6 comma 6. Now, uh, this length is like a property uh, that it the length will increase or decrease its scalar. Now, I could have multiplied with minus a and this could have been minus 3, then it would have become minus 6 minus 6 and instead of pointing in that direction it would have pointed in this direction. The direction would change that is fine, but the length will remain the positive. So, uh, your multiplication factor of a times your vector v right. Now, this for this one we have to take the absolute value 
these are single bars ok. So, basically you are taking the absolute of a times the vector distance of b ok. That is the second property alright. So, that takes us to the third property which is triangle inequality. So, what does triangle inequality say? So, suppose I have a point a here in a plane I have a point here say b and say I have a point third point here c. So, if I travel from point a to b and represent it by a vector say a and then I travel from point you know, uh, b to c and say give it a vector b and I could have directly gone from a to c yeah and if you remember from our vector addition property. So, if I place my vector one at the tail end of the other one. So, I can add them together. So, this vector is a plus b remember. So, what I am saying is my third vector a plus b should be sum of a plus b ok these two vectors, but what should be the uh, equality they cannot be always equal because this a plus b sometimes can be less or smaller than the summation of these two field and at the most they can be equal given if they are in all in the same straight line. So, if it is a then b and then c in this case a to b and then a b to c and then if I go from a to c directly right without any stopping at the b in this case they are equal. So, the max I can get for a plus b is it can be equal or it can be less than the summation of a to b plus b to c. So, it should be something like less than equal to does it make sense. So, basically I am going from say a to b and then b to c this distance will be always longer summation of these two distance will be always longer compared to this distance directly going from a to c. Now, this can be equal in only in a special case when they are all in the same line and they are equidistant. ok. So, the third property says that the summation of this uh, a plus b will be less than equal to the individual magnitude of the vectors a and b all right great. So, now that we know the basic properties of norm. So, in our next video we are going to look at the different types of norm. Uh, we have the L 2 norm a typically we call them call it also as Euclidean distance then we have the L p norm then we have the L 1 norm also known as the taxi cab geometry or Manhattan distance and then we are going to look into the L infinity norm and the special case of L 0 norm. Now, this is boring <laughs> again I would call it that way. So, why, why do we need to know different types of norm because eventually we will see that this norm is going to help us create a different idea in order to do machine learning and how the vectors are spaced what is the distance between them and so on this is going to give us some clear picture geometrically and we can solve our machine learning problem that way. This will make more sense as we progress. So, stay tuned stay uh, keep watching the videos and kindly subscribe and pass it on to your friends colleagues, so that they can also share the same information. Thank you and have a great day.